Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The reason why we take advantage of the platform, the pulpit, to educate, enlighten, transform, and empower God's people is because the church is the cheapest platform for transformation. Hallelujah. That being said, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see that now? So cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 2. Verse 3 now. It says, For when they, are you seeing what Paul is saying now? When they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. If you are a Christian, shout verse 4 with all your heart. So it settles it once and for all. Ready? One to read. So do we have that clear now? All right, so let's go back to our teaching. That's not my, I just thought to bring that in. Because you see, your stamina in the kingdom is based on the degree of illumination that you have. The realm of the spirit does not respect you because of your biological, your physical age, no. The realm of the spirit respects you on account of the stability of your understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.10, 1 Corinthians 2.10, the Bible tells us that God has revealed them to us. The preceding verse will say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Apostle Paul now says, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit such at all things yea the deep things of god so we know for a fact that we can access deep mysteries in the spirit that can help us navigate prophetic seasons now the believers earth walk is broken into seasons hallelujah and the most important of all seasons is not just the biological seasons rainy season dry season as we call them here in Nigeria but the prophetic season because your the lifetime what you call your lifetime is a joining together of many prophetic seasons and the quality of your life holistically will be measured by the intelligence you have to navigate those seasons you can do well in a season past and lose discernment for the season that is now before you and you can literally lose your bishopric because you do not have the intelligence to discern nor to navigate seasons hallelujah those that remain in god's program those that have longevity of impact are not just people who are zealous they are not just people who are gifted but they are people who can read the writings on the wall 10 years ago the church was going to enter a new season there were people who predating those 10 years were relevant were at the cutting edge of god's prophetic and apostolic activity but simply because for some reason they lost discernment to understand seasons there are many things Things about prophetic seasons prophetic seasons come with a change in patterns and if you do not have discernment to understand prophetic seasons you will be using the jawbone of an ass where the duty of that jawbone is already over it was once used to kill 3,000 Philistines but it was not always used Prophetic seasons demand discernment to change and to switch patterns, to know how to stand upon your watch, set yourself upon the tower to see what the Lord says. It is true that the Red Sea once parted, but it is not the only formula for escaping water. So if you stand before Jordan and you are expecting it to part like the Red Sea parted, you may die there because there are times the formula will be 
that the sea will part. There are other times you will be empowered to walk upon the water. There are times that the storm you will be inside. Yours is to verify whether Jesus is in the boat. So the rod, the boat, and your feet are all tools that can help you go to the other side depending on what season. Is someone following already? Many, many believers start well. They start well in ministry. They start well in business. The world is full of gifted people who are largely bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And so seasons, prophetic seasons come and come upon them and they do not know how to navigate these seasons and people literally lose their relevance. And you hear people say, this man was once anointed, was once great. This business was once great. There are many any businesses who had their seasons and they excelled but from an economic standpoint they did not have the intelligence to adjust to the world that was changing and today they have neatly been etched out of relevance and that is true even for ministers of the gospel that is true for families that is true for nations those who are leading the field in any area of life today have mastered the art of not just providing the value that keeps them relevant but they have kept an extra eye like wise men to watch seasons so that when they detect a change in season they go back spiritually economically politically to the drawing board and they reinvent themselves to remain relevant if you're with me already say amen, amen. so for part one we're looking at isaiah 43 i want to show you a few things by the spirit of god that will help and guide us let's read 18 and 19 isaiah 18 and 19 part 1 remember ye not the former things hallelujah neither consider the things of old 19 behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness he says and rivers in the desert may the Lord bless the reading of his word the first point we need to examine in discussing this scripture is the statement remember ye not remember ye not please follow carefully that is a very powerful warning he's saying remember ye not he's attempting to guide your focus to something and he's saying the way the mind works is you cannot be focused on the past and on the future together are we together so he's helping to disconnect you from something so that he can redirect your attention to something else god is doing because at every given point your mind your attention your zeal your commitment your passion can only be invested in one aspect of your life and in this case this person here is focused on yesterday and its achievements or its failures and the prophet begins by saying remember ye not i wrote here over dwelling in the past or on the past whichever is appropriate over dwelling in the past or on past thoughts both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life overdwelling on the past both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life as simple as this statement is there are many people today they failed because they succeeded the reason why they became failures was that at one point in their life they were too successful to be focused there are many people today who became successful because they so failed that it brought them to a point of determination that they will not fail again. Here he's telling us that the past, whether positive or negative, can have an adverse effect as far as destiny actualization is concerned. The negative past, I wrote here, the negative past can create fear, can create discouragement and it can also deflate your passion to press when you dwell on a negative past it sustains an ability to bring fear it sustains an ability to bring discouragement and to deflate your passion to press give us judges chapter 6 please we'll read from verse 13 to 15 judges chapter 6 is god helping someone 
Now follow carefully. And Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and calls him a mighty man of valor. And look at Gideon's response. Go back to 13. Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be the miracles which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? You thought Gideon would say, Wow, and now impressed. Look at his response, verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Dwelling on a negative past. Now you understand what I mean by it can bring discouragement. It can bring fear. It can deflate your passion to press. There are many people today who have lost out on their passion towards life, towards ministry, because their life is a plethora of negative occurrences. Financial problems, marital problems, health problems, ministry failure, maybe mistakes of the past, and all those things combined can become a weapon that the devil can use to deflate your passion. Do you know, I'm sure that every one of you here can bear witness that there are people who at one point you could trace their zeal. Their zeal for life was palpable. I mean, they, they were bubbling with energy. And a few years down the line, when they've been beaten down left and right by the vicissitudes of life, they watch you in your zeal as a young man and they say, Save Johnny, this road you are following, we once followed it. Dwelling on a negative past, remember ye not, he says. Hallelujah. The Lord is challenging Gideon, giving him an assignment to be a mighty man. And Gideon is saying, listen, you don't know my problem. I am the least in my father's house and my father's house is the least. So don't even bring this. There are many preachers today who have so failed in ministry to a point that any word that comes from God, they cast it as a word from the devil. There are many people who have failed in business. There are many champions, custodians of great destinies that have lost it all. I do not know any great man who has not failed before. When you find one, run away. When you find a great man who has not failed before, you are standing before a risk. There is a failure requirement that becomes an anchor that brings balance and stability to your life in the presence and in the midst of success. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. So dwelling on a negative past can affect you. Many of us, you are listening to me right now in this auditorium, across the overflows and following online. Perhaps this is already a word for you. In the midst of your failure, there is still an apostle there. In the midst of your failure, there is still a prophet there. In the midst of a failure, there is still a businessman. The kingdom financier is still there. Do not think yesterday went away with the gift and the grace and the mantle and the calling. It is still there. Remember ye not. He is redirecting the focus of a people to understand the new that God is doing now. Are we together now? Yes, you cannot discern and understand the prophetic thing God is doing in your family. Apostle, don't tell me about a great life. We've lost three, four, five members of our family and we do not even know who is next. Remember ye not the former things. When he says remember ye not, he's not saying erode it out of your memory. That cannot happen. He's saying do not dwell, do not give it life and strength. Do not dedicate your focus. Do not invest your attention to that which is dead. You only try to water a tree that is dying, but if it is dead, you leave it. Are we together? How about the positive past? The positive past I wrote here can create complacency, can create pride, 
can create overconfidence and even indiscipline. Let me take it again. Dwelling on the positive past, your achievements over dwelling, I would say, over dwelling on your positive past can create complacency, lukewarmness, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and can create a sense of indiscipline. When you dwell on your negative past, the side effect is that you will have fear, discouragement. It will deflate your passion to press. But when you dwell on your positive past, overdwell there, build a monument and a camp around yesterday and its achievement and all its tried, it's able to bring you to a point of complacency, a point of pride, a point of overconfidence and indiscipline. Judges chapter 16, please, from verse 18 to 21. Give it to us. It's the same book of Judges. Now we want to examine another character called Samson. Samson was a warrior par excellence. The source of his strength was a mystery. This man would single-handedly defeat a whole army without seeking for help. And he became so confident upon his achievements of yesterday and now yesteryears. Read verse 18 and 29. Follow carefully and let's learn a lesson there. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. And the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money into her hand. You see why poverty is very bad? Because this woman destroyed the destiny of a great man simply because of money. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his hair and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Verse 20, the Bible says, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Read the remaining part of 20. Ready? One to read. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go up as at other times as before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. Verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Can I tell you, overconfidence has destroyed many people. I will not pray, but the power of God will still move. I will not rehearse like, like, like never before, but I will still do well. I will still be a champion. I will not study scripture, but the grace is already there. I have revelation anyhow. Can I tell you, our world is full of psychophants who clap for you even when you are falling until you finally get to your grave. You must know how to celebrate success and create a boundary and say Lord thank you for the blessings of yesterday but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind whatever it is I press many people do not have the stamina to look away from the uploads of yesterday and remain focused into the vision of the now dwelling on your positive past can destroy it can bring pride. It can bring overconfidence. In the case of Samson, she woke him up and said, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible said he shook himself like before. I will not read any business book. I've been an astute businessman. I will excel as before. It doesn't matter. I'm a man so loved by people. Doesn't matter how serious I am spiritually or not. Members who come as before. The deception of success is that without any effort to continue, it tries to indoctrinate you into believing that the seasons that are upon you will remain that way forever. Make reference to my teaching, the law of seasons. Remember the dream of Pharaoh, that in every man's life there is seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. What you do in the years of plenty is what will sustain you. Please listen to that teaching, the law of seasons. I told you that every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. And every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. You will not always be a CEO, mm -mm. no matter how great you are. Are we together? Yes. 
Respectfully speaking, there are many people, especially in the arts and entertainment in sports, who did not know that the seasons in a man's life, there is transition. And you can find someone who may be an excellent goalkeeper, an excellent striker, speaking in terms of soccer, football. And they can enjoy grace and, and splendor for 10, 15, perhaps 20 years. And in one moment, how about political leaders? In one moment, you are a leader and in a matter of minutes, everything, the entire paraphernalia that comes with your position departs. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, great former things. The moment it is former, whether it is great or it is not, you celebrate it, you can reminisce on it so that it helps to add that energy. But over dwelling in yesterday, have you seen people who the only thing they have to tell you is the achievements of yesteryears? I was once anointed, we once did mighty crusade. For instance, or I was once a great businessman. I shook hands with this president and that president. And you are asking, where were you when seasons changed? You must understand how to navigate prophetic seasons. Otherwise, you would not have longevity of impact. So the prophet is teaching us and he's saying, Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old, we have learned so far now that overdwelling on the past, whether positively or negatively, can create an adverse effect on your life and destiny. Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Just to buttress on that point, Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, I like Paul, forgetting those things which are behind, the achievements, the pain, the failure, Apostle, I would have been a great man today, but in 1999, they defrauded me of my business. And it is past. You cannot continue remaining there, whereas there is a demand upon your life and your destiny. You must sustain the ability to wave goodbye to yesterday and all its crowns and all its pain so that you can press. Nobody runs forward looking backward. Have you found such a person that you run, you really intend to run? Say an Olympian and they shoot the gun on your marks, set. And then they shoot the gun and the person is turning back and intends to run and to run and win. Mm -mm. Your focus should be so much so that even looking to the side can distract you. Talk less looking back. Let's finish that scripture. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. I consider not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things that are before me, he said, I press. Hallelujah. The next prophetic word from that scripture is behold. I like that statement. When he now says, remember ye not the former things. Now that he's brought you to a point where you've been detached to yesterday, it's success, the crowns, and the pains, the failures all together. He now says, behold. The word behold is a very powerful word. Behold means see with the eyes of your spirit. Behold means conceive as a reality what I want to tell you. Behold means let me have your rapt attention. Now that you have been distracted away from the mundanity of yesterday, behold, let me have your attention. You want to understand what behold means? You have to read the book of Acts that Peter and John were on their way to get beautiful at the hour of prayer. The Bible says they saw a man who, had, who was seated there for a long time, lame. And the man was begging for arms. Let me show you what behold means. And Peter said, look on us. Let me have your attention. And the Bible says Peter fastening his eyes on him said, look on us. Verse 5, now, and he gave heed, that's what it means to behold, he gave heed to them expecting to receive. 
he gave heed to them expecting to receive to receive an instruction to receive a blueprint to receive a pathway when he says behold it means i need your attention spirit soul and body i'm about to deliver something to you that your destiny depends on behold this is a prophetic word. There are many ways God tells us to behold. He will start showing you a certain dream within a certain season. It is him saying, behold, let me have your attention. You've been too distracted. But right now there is something that your ministry needs to do. There is something, there is a formula coming from heaven that spells your dominion for the next 10 years. Behold. Behold, God is speaking to someone. Behold, the next 10 years will not be like the last 10 years. Behold, have you received the prophetic blueprint for business? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for ministry? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for politics? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for that which God is doing in your family? Behold, behold means let me have your attention. For some of you, it's taken you two years to behold because one moment you want to focus and then you remember. Do you know that you can behold for a short time? He looked at Peter and Peter fastened his eyes on Jesus and he said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. While he was focused, he kept walking. But the Bible says the waves, you would think because you are beholding, the waves should stop. They will still be there, but your ability to look away from them and onto Jesus. The waves and the vicissitudes of life have distracted people such that they stop beholding. The reason why he brought that dream last year was because he was trying to get your attention. Do you not know you are a great prophet? Do you not know you are a great apostle? Do you not know you are a great intercessor? Do you not know there is a kingdom financier within you? Do you not know that is a portion of God's program that has been committed to you? But God is calling you to behold. Do not play with this word. It takes a long time for God to get men's attention. Go and read your Bible. There are few men who God got their attention in a moment. For instance, you know how long it took God to negotiate with Abraham until he believed God finally? God had to invent a strategy to get Abraham to believe that he would become the father of nations. You would think just because he was Abraham, he believed. No, study and read your Bible. One night God had to call him and said, Abraham, count the stars. He tried counting and he lost count. Try again. He tried counting and he lost count. He said, the same way you have lost count, that is how your seed will be. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. You know how long it takes for God to get the attention of men? There are people who it will take decades for God to finally call them and say, do you know from age five, the dream you started having was me calling you and you are finally saying yes to me at 55. 50 years to behold. So don't you play with this word. When he says behold, he's not just saying use your optical eyes. It takes a level of focus that only God can give to look away from situations and circumstances and to behold but there is a miracle in beholding one of the miracles is that as we behold him we are changed mm. as we behold him we are changed please listen listen let your heart be open to understand what i'm teaching you tonight the challenge with many people and the reason why it looks like god is not doing so much with you is because you have not mastered the art of beholding beholding can take a long time Beholding can take a long time. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that all that happened to the disciples for three and a half years was their ministry of beholding. They were beholding as they were being changed. Lecture after lecture. Beholding does not just mean see. Sometimes beholding can mean stop what you are doing now for the next five years. That is the price of beholding. Sometimes beholding can mean relocate to another city and remain there until I come to you. Beholding has a serious implication. It can mean suspend what you are doing for now, no matter how productive it is. There are few people who can behold. Is someone learning? Behold can, means, can mean that God can give you a, an instruction 
and say instead of giving 10% or 20% of all your earnings for the next one year, for you it is 80% every year. There is something I want to teach you that will evolve you into the financial apostle that I'm programming you to become. Beholding is not just your ears. Beholding is not just your eyes. Beholding is your heart and your life. And because the Spirit of God does not struggle with man indefinitely, you have a choice to be so distracted that you distract his presence away from your life. He will respect you. He will honor you, but the danger is that you will be losing relevance to a season that is coming. Hallelujah. There are many sermons that have come out from beholding more than studying. There are many songs that have come from beholding more than studying. There are many mantles that have rested upon people. What was the price to carry Elijah's mantle? If you can see me, not if you can talk. You become a talkative while I'm rising. You will remain there and the prophets, the sons of the prophets were talkatives, but they did not know how to behold. Here was a man who said, I need something. A double portion he said ah my dear son you have asked a hard thing but if you can see me was he not looking at him and the Bible says suddenly he saw a chariot of fire that came to carry him and he, he stood there focused while he was standing there the sons of the prophet were shouting distracting doing all kinds of things he, he remained focused and that mantle fell upon him he said my father my father the chariots of uh, the chariots of of horsemen and the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof and that mantle fell upon him he carried it and went to the jordan and he said where is the lord god of elijah and he he, he struck the the mantle and the jordan parted hither and thither Proximity does not necessarily mean you are beholding. How many of you know that there are people who can be so worried their position is to look at you? Someone can literally be looking at you like this and that is a sign that he has left you because he's so distracted. He's just thinking, this fuel now, this issue now. And yet the person is looking at you and you will think that the person is looking at you, it means that he's giving you the attention. And the person is thinking of something far away from church. Behold. Ah, very powerful word. So remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Next instruction. Behold. Behold. See. Dedicate your life and your destiny. Be prepared to receive. Be prepared to understand. Be prepared to be engaged prophetically. And then the next instruction is I do a new thing. This is very, very powerful. I do a new thing. I do a new thing. He never said I will say a new thing. He says I will do a new thing. But let me tell you something about the way God operates. You know by now that God never does what you want or what you pray for. No, he does what you pray for that is consistent with what he has said. The only thing that moves the hand of God are his words. Genesis 21, 1. Do not forget this scripture for as long as you live. Let's read it together. Genesis 21, 1. One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. One more time. And the Lord visited Sarah. Not just as she wanted. He visits as he has said. He does as he has spoken. He visits as he has said. He does as he has spoken. So if your desire is not captured within his speaking, there is no performance. The performance of God in the life of a man is only possible when your desire is consistent with something he has said. The assignment of the power of God is to make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. So when God says his power moves to honor what he has said so that there will be a performance, there will be a manifestation of those things 
that he has said. Are we together now? This is why the word of God is your basis for receiving anything in the kingdom. If you cannot find what God has said, there is no basis for God's commitment towards you because he has submitted his reputation below he has exalted his word the bible says even above his office above his name you have to learn this so when he says i will do a new thing another expression for it is that find out the things i have said i will do because it is what i have said that i will do i refer you to my teaching exceeding great and precious promises there we considered how the the rich deposit all of the systems of advantage that have been provided for the believer in christ hallelujah the bible says god had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ but you must know them whereby are given to us this great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust if you're together shout a loud amen. amen behold i do a new thing a performance but you see another word i want us to consider in that sentence is the word new everybody here i presume understands english the word new means sometimes an unfamiliar path are we together now new may not necessarily mean a repetition of something that has happened new always suggests a virgin dimension something that you have never is not captured in your memory of yesterday that means there is a technique and a technology for approaching new things hallelujah behold i do a new thing the new i wrote here prophetic season before us demands three major things if we want to see the new manifested in our lives there is a prophetic season an old season is wrapping up in our lives across the body of christ and a new season is opening right before us but a new season requires three things number one discernment and flexibility to experience the new the first thing you need is discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility your spirit and your mind that floodity of mind and thoughts is very important if you are to experience the new hallelujah in mark chapter 2 Mark chapter 2, give us 11 and 12. Mark chapter 2, please. Now, this was the man who was lame. Jesus looks at him and says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into your house. Verse 12, the Bible says, and immediately he arose, he took up the bed and went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it in this fashion this is what it means to be new it comes in a fashion that you are not used to you will need discernment so that you don't call evil good just because God is not moving in a way he moved before does not mean he's not the one moving you see getting used to how God moved sometimes can limit you from discerning how he is moving now if you were there in my example again that I gave earlier on if you were there when the Red Sea parted, every time you see a sea, you start smiling, especially if you have a rod in your hand. Except that the strategy for your victory at that point will not be the parting of the Red Sea. How many people have remained before Jordan for a long time? Look at the man in John chapter 5. I always make reference to this man. The Bible says he was lying down there for 38 years. There was no man to help him sadly but jesus came to introduce to him that the way to be healed by the stirring of the water is only one there are many other strategies another strategy is when jesus comes to you your season has happened you don't have to wait for one year in his absence you can make do with whatever formula that is there but jesus is able to step in in one moment this is very powerful 
the principles of business diligently followed can prosper you with time it is true that that is a very a biblically recommended pathway but i submit to you by the authority of scripture that is not the only way when jesus comes he can change the dynamics of certain realities for instance by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow is not an economic principle but it is a principle that has has validity from scripture hmm. who am i speaking to behold i do a new thing that means your life will be a wonder people will say this is the only way to make children great this is the only way to get land and build a house this is the only way to do ministry and yet god will be redirecting you through virgin paths that don't make sense except that the result will be exceptional you it will be in a way that people will say we have never seen it in this manner you have to be flexible listen you see this is the reason why in followership there are two dimensions number one follow them who have who through faith and patience have obtained the promise why do we follow them because of the advantage of experience there is a cyclical movement to life this is where age eldership and experience plays are we together even if you are Samuel who will be a great prophet you will need Eli to help you interpret the voice of God because he has had it before. And God will usually speak to you using the voice of Eli. However, there are certain virgin moves of God that only happens when you look unto Jesus. That is another way to follow. There is follow them, but there is looking on to Jesus. Because there are times that he moves, both the old and the young stand at a loss because it is a path that has never been followed. Listen, if you are a prophetic person, discern what I am telling you. There are many, many people who, respectfully speaking, loyalty to how God moved yesterday is stopping them from aligning with how he is moving now. Hallelujah. Yes. It is true that he once spat on the ground. And made spittle out of it. But that is not the only way. No. Many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded here. Yours is for your heart to be open. That's why I love the, 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 the rendition here. There are songs of worship. They said I will follow the lamb. But they also said I will follow the lion. Do you know it's the same person? So why are you mentioning two dimensions to the same person? Because the way the lion leads you is not the way the lamb will lead you, although it is still the same person. You don't have to stretch your ears to hear the lion. The roar is loud enough. But you will need dedication and concentration to hear the lamb speak. I am meek and I am lowly. There was a wind and the voice was not in the wind. There was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake. And then after all of that, there was a still, small voice. Elijah, what are you doing here? But when fire was coming from heaven, it was not silent. It came in such a mighty way that it came and consumed everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We need a generation of men and women who understand how to discern. To discern to discern the bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing it is true that you have never seen a child prophesy but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say daddy don't do business with that man go and pray for two hours and it does not make sense his age you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you but God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense and yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child if you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl you may never find the prophet you must know how to hear the king the prophet but you must also know how to hear the slave girl because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to Elisha are we together now say discernment one more time say discernment 
there are times that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the spirit of God constrains you and in that constraint watch this in that constraint something begins to happen to you watch what happens to you you begin to have a feeling go for a three-day fasting listen can I tell you sometimes it will it does not make sense to anybody including you just the foolishness of obeying God you go and lock yourself first day nothing happens you just keep praying Lord you ask me to come here second day nothing happens by the third day a veil that did not open for your grandfather a veil that did not open for your father that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens and God says this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family this is the reason why people did not rise even though they were missionaries correct this adjust this step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere and men who do not understand this thing will say from whence did you come we we do not know know you in this fashion discernment you have been taught that businessmen don't pray they just think but the formula designed for your own advancement because of the field wherein you have found yourself you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman it is a strategy for your victory flexibility 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 discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command i always want to make reference respectfully speaking about 10 maybe 15 years or so ago the Lord spoke to me I, I shared this with with every sense of responsibility and he told me that the next decade of the church as at then that it would not just be by sales of tapes and CDs I remember and he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy not the best of production but he said my angel will take it to the nations and this is how our announcement you the flexibility to do it for someone God is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what I said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong mm. Just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong. This is a word for someone. Just because you are alone, alone in prayer, alone in giving, alone in the sacrifice. Everybody has gotten a job except you. Just because you are alone, they don't know what you are confronting. There are age-long altars that have vowed that nobody rises and God is submitting you. Do you know there are many things that God calls us to do that in doing them, the benefit is beyond ourselves. He's, you are looking through the loins of prophecy and you are seeing your children and your children's children and he's saying for their sake, go on the fast for their sake build capacity Elijah you are a prophet but eat the journey is far you'd have no idea where you are going he ate a little and he slept he woke him again he said eat it means pray it means study it means get knowledge it means build the relationships now you don't know how far you are going you may not have the luxury of this man you are seeing now invest in relationships invest in prayer a time will come the demand of the nations upon you you will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to you will drink from the residue of your investment This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. 
Listen, I will share with you something to bless your heart. Do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja? For three years, God began to speak to me that the season, a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end. And for three years, I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was just, I just kept praying. That dissatisfaction. I loved Zaria with all my heart. I was used to that. I mean, people were coming literally from all over the world. It was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen. And yet God was saying, this is just a layer. There is another layer. Remember ye not the former things. You can like yesterday too much. You will lose tomorrow because of yesterday. Listen, I returned back from, I think, South Africa. Had a meeting in Lagos. COVID was just about to start. Now, Abuja has always been second home, but not for ministry. I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was, it was just perhaps maybe among my people to just go. But where I, it was just in my heart. I knew I was having visions. They were not yet clear. You don't, it does not become clear from the beginning. It is not an unusual experience you are having. That's how we all pass through it. Anybody who understands building prophetic destiny, anything that comes with clarity from beginning is a sign that you are in error. God will always demand faith. There is a sign to that vision that will be hidden. It's your commitment that will cause him to unravel it. God is a God that hides himself in light. He will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you. Moses, he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed and yet it does not have any sound. And then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he now turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. It's not about the burning bush. There is more, but I needed to use it to get your attention. Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons. Just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow. The sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons. He made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years. Discernment. I remember I returned from Lagos and then I left for London. We were about the last set of people to leave London. As I came to Abuja, I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere, that was when they announced the lockdown, the global lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, that lockdown you see, that was it all. I said, no, there has to be a reason. Lord, what am I going to do with myself now? If I had left, I was considering using another flight, I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then God brought me, and as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. When COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story. Where the people will come from, that is another story. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. I began to pray, laying hands on those maps every day, praying. 
Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind, I may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray, mine is to prepare. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming for somebody God can just call you you have been fasting for every day but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed but do you have the flexibility the flexibility the flexibility it was time to turn water to wine the Bible says the wine finished and then they came Mary led them to Jesus watch this and Jesus said are you sure you really want new wine yes we want new wine embarrassment is imminent he said all right be ready to do what you've never done get six pots never has wine been formed that way no wine is formed through fermentation is that true and now he's using another formula and then they filled six pots. He said, fetch it. Don't taste it. Don't verify. Just be on your way. The Bible says, as they went in shame, what if nothing happened? Do you know they would have killed them at that point? In a feast, embarrassment is there. You now come and add to it. But as they went, in the foolishness of obedience, a miracle began to happen. The Bible says, when the rulers tasted it, they said, ah, what is this? People bring their best wine at first. That means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted. Ah, there is a kind, we, we thank God for our fathers. We thank God for generals, both in the Bible and in history. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns. And there are men and women, ordinary men, ordinary psalmists, ordinary prophets, ordinary apostles, ordinary businessmen. Listen, we don't know how to make wine, but we know how to carry it. Ah, we can carry it to nations. We are not the ones making the wine, but we can carry the wine. We can carry the wine. We can carry it to nations. We can carry it across the globe. And no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transference of that wine. The wine is not from us. We are not manufacturers of wine. We only take it to the rulers of the earth. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want This is the place of encounter Do to me what you want This is the place where my life is changed Do to me what you want Hear me when you read John chapter 2 and verse 11, it leaves us with a powerful statement. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. What was the miracle? To find ordinary men who started with water and then as they went, the water turned to wine and they served the nations. You would think the credit will go to the men of God. I say it again. Every wine you taste that is unusual was not manufactured by Joshua Selman, was not manufactured by Koinonia. The songs that you hear, men and women like Minister Dunsin sing it. We don't manufacture them. We only take them as, and serve them to the nations. The formula, listen, the formula when it has to do with working with God, creativity is not required. It is alignment and obedience. It is when we have to do with invading the cosmos. That is when we bring creativity. When it has to do with God, your creativity is not important. It is your alignment and your obedience. 
then when you receive from his presence you now add creativity to that which you have received hallelujah behold I do a new thing you want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life you must understand the power of the new the first key is discernment and flexibility let me give you the second very quickly the second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage strength and courage <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please 5 to 7 strength and courage there is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage. Joshua 1, 5 to 7. 1, 5 to 7. 1, 5 to 7. Thank you. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee, speaking to Joshua, all the days of your life. I hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity. The Bible starts by saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Get over it. I love Moses. I use Moses. But that formula is dead. Good things can die. It's not only evil that can die. God is a God of evolution and transition. As far as his work with the saints is concerned, there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming. It is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake you. Verse 6, it says, be strong. He's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office. A, 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 an office that would demand, I mean, the continuity, the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership. And yeah, He's speaking to the people. No idea of the battles that were before him. And Joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance. I hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there. And yet God did not even, he was talking as if the giants were already dead. Share the inheritance which I swear unto the fathers to give you. Seven. Only be thou strong. And, a, and very courageous be strong be very courageous can I tell you men who will understand navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength strength and courage courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with God blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor I've studied Mary's life from that journey until Jesus have I still don't know what is favor in that statement I understand giving birth to Jesus, but the controversies that surrounded Mary from that time, Joseph wanted to quietly leave her. She was about to lose her marriage, lose her life, and yet God calls that favor. So pain can be favor. There are moments that it does not look like it, and yet God calls it favor. Be careful what you call what, what is happening to you. Ask God for the name to use for it, because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance, and you call it pain, but God calls it favor. You would see Jesus dying on the cross. You call that death, but he calls that the path to victory. Today, when we go to heaven, we don't just use crowns to know Jesus because there are men and elders who have crowns but when everybody lifts his hand the one who has the scar that which was a, an emblem of shame today is the symbol that is that is the signature of his majesty when jesus appeared he he said to thomas's doubting not by saying look at my head he said put your hand so the scars the nails 
you would have seen him three four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak Jesus the foolish man at the other side of the cross you heard what the guy was saying too and the other one rebuked him and said we are criminals here for a just reason this man has not done anything so don't call your lack of food it's not poverty it's not always poverty you may be calling it poverty God is calling it training training for where he's taking you so that you will learn how to abound you will learn how to do it plenty and with nothing are we together now Believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit. Otherwise, you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to. You need courage. Say courage. You need strength. Yes, the Bible says, by the strength of an ox is much good gotten. The strength of an ox. You see how an ox plows the field for hours, yet it is making the ridges. The strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time. There are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you. There are times you have to see ahead of every other person, maybe in your family, maybe in your business, and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one. Do you have the courage to be alone? strength and courage psalm 27 1 and 3 1 to 3 psalm 27 we're looking at the second key i like the psalmist you know i've told you this thing this psalmist man i really look forward to seeing him in heaven the lord is my light and my salvation the man suffered too much till he became wise hallelujah do you know that his wisdom came on the strength of his cars the psalmist the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Did the Bible not say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise? He says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need courage. In this seeker-friendly world, there are many, many times you will have to walk against the odds. People do not have to believe in you to succeed. No. We live in a world where everybody wants to be free of any, you just want to be accepted by everybody regardless. No, sir. The way of the kingdom is a narrow path. There are times you will have to take certain steps because of your conviction, because of courage. It may not be the best. But that may be the path earmarked for your greatness. Hallelujah. Courage strength number three experiencing new dimensions demand obedience this is a serious one obedience king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords Faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Emmanuel. All the world is calling your name, Emmanuel. When you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel. When you come again.
listen there are some of you right now you are beginning to enter very deep seasons you are in a kairos moment in your life and it's not something that will just be for weeks the Holy Spirit is going to hold your hand and lead you through dimensions sometimes you may not understand I raise that song because I want to prophesy to you that you be strong in the midst of it I charge you by the Spirit be strong you will pray alone many times you will fast alone many times the stage will not be there for men to give you the applaud but you need stamina and discipline stamina and discipline to build capacity hear me you are building capacity for the days ahead you are eating for the journey that is ahead this is the word of the lord to you build capacity the holy ghost is going to hold your hands he will draw you through realms and dimensions you have not seen he said call on me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not 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 listen there is a kind of warrior God is building it's an arsenal that the world has not seen there are hybrid spiritual combinations grace upon grace there are certain graces that were alone but God is matching them with other graces because there is a kind of warrior he's building listen to what I'm telling you uh, you, you will look at them and wonder are you an apostle are you an a prophet we, we cannot describe what exactly you are there are hybrid combinations the hunger of people is driving them to touch graces they are touching graces the grace of an intercessor the grace of a financier the grace of a prophet the grace of an apostle the grace of a watchman and that hybrid combination is forming a very dangerous believer that God will be using as a battle axe in this end time. Listen, you see, before now, before now, there are certain pathways that when men see you following, they can almost predict. But right now, you see worshippers that you do not know. Are you a musician or a prophet or an apostle? Because there are hybrid spiritual combinations. That the hunger of men and the urgency of God's prophetic program is causing men to outsource graces. It's a dangerous spiritual combination. You will see men that are like armies. One man. One man. Because of the abundance of the graces that they have captured hallelujah so you look at that man you are seeing a Benny Hinn you are seeing a Renhard Bunker you are seeing a Catherine Kuhlman and you are saying what kind of believer are you who combined you like this the intelligence of the spirit ah. men who don't have the voice to sing but they can receive songs like ladders from the spirit and give it to the ministry of psalmistry and say sing us into higher realms sing us let us ascend the ladders that will open to us the vistas of the spirit listen do not be afraid you started your journey thinking you are only a businessman but now you've gone through the training of a psalmist. You've gone through the training of an entrepreneur. You are now in the training of a prophet. You too, you don't even know the name of what you will become. He simply calls us witnesses because the nature of your assignment. Oh, David, a day will come. It is your song that will come out from your spirit. But don't just call me a musician because I sing. There is still a prophet there. And hiding behind the layer of the prophet, there is still a king that is there. Can I tell you, hear me, there are some of you, 
God dealt with you in certain ways, but he has never used the product of your growth. He kept it. In the future, he will revisit it. There was a time you were writing songs and it stopped. And you think that that ministry has died. It has not died. God is only focusing on other trainings. A day will come, he will tell you, reach down to that weapon of psalmistry. Bring it out. I suspended it so that I would train you in the prophetic. Now that you have become a prophet with fire, bring out that weapon of psalmistry. Obedience. Obedience to scripture. Please listen. Obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions. Can I tell you? Prophetic seasons don't just demand discernment and flexibility they do not just demand strength and courage they demand obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions whatever he says to do do it the miracle of the wine is not just in your moving forward it's in your moving as he commanded i prophesied as i was commanded not as i wanted not as i wished the desires of many will lead them to perdition because they cannot submit their desire to the obedience of scripture or the obedience of the prophetic let me show you two scriptures number one is found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 you must be willing to receive and honor scripture and honor prophetic instructions and Simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have caught nothing he says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net can I tell you prophetic instructions are powerful when they are guided and administered within the jurisdiction of scripture prophecy is able to rewrite the narrative every time seasons are about to open there is always a manifestation of the prophetic when it was time for the famine in samaria to end the prophet elijah came and with one decree by this time tomorrow everything the climate changed prophetic instructions is it the miracle of abundant supply in Samaria is it the miracle of the axe head in 2nd Kings chapter 1 to 7 6 1 to 7 the axe head that floated it was all through and by prophetic instructions is it the victory in the days of Jehoshaphat in 2nd Chronicles 21 to 30 all of them depend on obedience to prophetic instructions let me tell you what prophetic instructions are not number one it is not manipulating people to gratify self it is not manipulating people to gratify flesh that is not prophecy it's just the limitation of humans when they are not broken and are not aligned to God authentic genuine biblical prophetic instructions come as a scriptural instruction from God through his spirit are we together now and then through a human vessel to the people for instance declaring a fast it says sanctify yourself for in three days God will speak to you he will come to you reveal himself he will speak to you prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come he said come the excellency of prophetic instructions is that if and when they are obeyed they always deliver because God is back of it he confirmed the words of his messengers, he says. Hallelujah. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now you understand that scripture. Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing in your life demands discernment and flexibility. I do a new thing demands strength and courage. I do a new thing demands that you obey that you learn to live by the word of God. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please sit down. Let me give you this to wrap up tonight's teaching. But then, this will be 
the ladder upon which we'll take off from next week this one now is a prophetic revelation God gave me there are five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ right now I want you to write them down five prophetic seasons the Lord revealed to me that is being opened to the body of Christ now and we must understand how to discern in the spirit and how to walk with this this is why this teaching came by the spirit number one the first prophetic season that is opening up to us right now is a season of the harvest please write a season of the harvest there will be such massive salvation of souls according to Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37 38 we are in a season of the harvest then saith he unto his disciples the harvest is truly plenteous but the laborers are few he says next verse 38 now pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that means this harvest that you see all these souls that you see who are careless there is a caretaker the caretaker is the Holy Ghost to see to it that as many of them who come into the saving knowledge of Jesus he's called the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his field so every sinner in the mind of God is a harvest it's not a seed growing it's a harvest ready to be sickled into the fold it is the bankruptcy of laborers what is the implication of the season of harvest I don't want to go ahead of myself we'll leave that for next week but the season of the harvest demands that there is a kind of training there is an awakening that God is going to be placing upon men are we together that will cause that through mighty signs and wonders so many will come to Jesus within the time that we have left the first season that is being opened before us now believers body of Christ we must discern is the season of the harvest are you ready for number two the second season the Lord revealed to me is called the season of abundance of grace the season of abundance of grace manifestations of divine abilities and enablements in a capacity that has not been seen you will see men carry weighty graces weighty possibilities ordinary men but empowered in such an unusual way the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power Acts 10 38 and he went about you don't go about the difference between a madman and a destiny changer is what is on you a madman too is going about but he's not doing good he's not healing they that are oppressed of the devil there is a grace and a mantle is called an abundance of grace second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 and God is able to make Make all grace hmm. abound abound means coordinated towards your direction that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work most times when we quote this scripture we only limit it to finance this has nothing to do with money or finance it was referenced while he was teaching on sowing and reaping but this is a very powerful potent spiritual law God is able to make all grace a season of abundance of grace what does that mean unusual manifestations Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32 you know the prophecy the prophecy of Joel it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions 29 it says and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit 30 I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is very powerful. Abundance of grace. That means men and women will carry unusual ability 
activities of the spirit unusual abilities men like Joshua who would speak and literally the sun would stand still hallelujah you will see men you see I was reading the other day about the church in Nigeria again my goodness history and technology did not combine themselves properly to do justice for us to really explore the extent of grace and the hand of God that was upon these patriarchs who have now joined the cloud of witnesses when you study the history of the church in Nigeria some of these are old folks and our fathers who have now transited these men operated in strange dimensions but they did not have the advantage of technology to have a rich capture of their manifestations elemental forces literally bowed to the dominion of the grace of God upon them but you see as great as that is Smith Wigglesworth died living a prophecy that there is still a generation coming that will outdo every manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives I truly believe that this is the generation yes I truly believe that not because we are better than the generations past it has so pleased God by the election of grace and the prophetic timing that a generation will arise, ordinary men, but with such an abundance of grace. Number three, what is the third prophetic season that is being opened to the church? Are you ready? The season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. This is what God told me. A season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies prophecies from scripture and prophecies from modern history there are few of these mighty men we know who died without leaving a prophecy some of us have not found the prophecies but some of these men under the unction of the spirit especially around their final days on earth they immortalize their impact by leaving certain prophecies the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we, through patience and the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. Hallelujah. There are great men and women who left very serious prophecies across several denominations. Some of them could not speak English, but they still spoke. They documented their writings. For the generation that is coming some of them this some of these these prophecies were harbingers they were signposts warnings cautions some of them were encouragements some of them they were revelations of prophetic blueprints pitfalls to jump when you got to that level it's important that we obtain grace first from scripture and then the wisdom of the ancient God is empowering those prophetic words for some of them those prophetic words are hundreds of years old but they will still come to pass for instance the prophecy about the revival that is happening across the nations don't you think a group of men were just stared and just had fire like that don't you think the prophecy about Nigeria has been there before some of us were born hallelujah I remember a group of people who a man I, I met one time and they left a prophetic word they were praying there's a song it is raining all around me you know that song now I can hear the latter rain now hold on do you know what brought about that song it was in the place of prayer it was a prophetic word for a generation that's how that song came Give us more rain until we are wet and we are soaked in the latter rain. There are many songs you have been singing. You call them hymns, but they are prophecies. They contain codes within them that will be unlocked in this season. Many of you, one of these nights, you will go to sleep as usual, except that in your sleep, you will wake up and you will not be the same person who went to sleep. And God would say, you have finally found it. That when these fathers were prophesying, they spoke and it concerned you through the loins of time. And it is time for you to walk in partnership with that prophecy. It was true that Emmanuel would come from a virgin. 
but there was no name Mary that was mentioned. A woman aligned herself with prophecy. If Mary rejected it, the Holy Ghost would have gone to look for another virgin. Only God knows how many prophecies are hovering around right now. The prophecy about the restoration of the healing mantle. Kenneth Copeland spoke it. R.W. Shambach spoke it. These are, these are the many that I know. These men spoke it that there will be a prophetic renaissance of the authentic healing ministry in the similitude of the tent meetings that used to happen in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. But all prophecies are fulfilled through the hands of men. So somebody will get up one day and begin to sense in your heart to study the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter. You don't even know what is leading you. You are, you are seeing a grace is lead. You see, let me tell you something about mantles. When, when a mantle is looking for you, your life stops being normal. There is an energy and a hunger that makes you strange, almost like a madman. When others are sleeping, you are awake. You do not know by what impulse you are kept. You try to sleep, sleep will be taken away from you because the destinies connected to your obedience will not allow you sleep. Hallelujah. Only God knows how many prophecies. And you see, no matter how long a prophetic word stays unfulfilled, a time will always come. You would think Jesus will never appear. Even after 400 years from Malachi to Matthew, theologically speaking, there was no mention of God, no nothing. It was supposed to, supposedly a dark age in the history of the church. From Malachi to Matthew, 400 years thereabout. You would think he would not come. Suddenly a madman just shows up from nowhere, filled with the Holy Ghost from his, mo his mother's womb, coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Found himself in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey. You will say, thank God this madman is in the wilderness. This kind of man should not come into the city. Yet that was the man who was... Look at the way this guy's life was literally sacrificed. He had not a normal life simply because he was the one to ordain Jesus and then one day do you know that Jesus was not the only one who was born the day he was born he had birthday mates yet they were not the Savior and then this young boy is born and Mary had no idea she just knew an angel said this man and you know she just felt one of those prophets and Jesus grew in wisdom stature and favor with God and with men became a mighty man indeed the savior listen ladies and gentlemen please hear me there are many prophecies you see the manifestation of the diverse graces that are in nigeria the manifestation of the graces in africa god in 2005 i had a vision and in that vision i saw young asians Asians, fair skinned Asians, fire came from heaven and rested upon just one of them, and then it started spreading like a candle and it moved until it spread across those people. And the Holy Ghost told me that there will be such a move of the Spirit in Asia. And then, in another vision, the Lord began to speak to me that Africa, that rejected stone, you see that that rejected stone please listen carefully and i have taught on this many many times that rejected stone that africa will herald jesus christ the continents europe has been given their chance to herald jesus america has been given their chance to herald jesus but africa that rejected stone when that prophecy came many of us were not born but the prophecy was still there still hovering around and now, one by one, there are people being handpicked from the south of Nigeria, from the north of Nigeria. You will see one person, maybe from Borno, Maiduguri, not even having any comeliness, yet the prophecy will land on him. You will see another Yoruba man or woman minding their business, the prophecy will land. You will see another person whose grandfather supported missionaries, and God will say, no, in this prophetic formation, I must honor this family. And the grace will land upon them it will come to the middle belt and hand pick a few people this is what is happening and then it is spreading to africa my god ghana kenya 
Uganda, South Africa, Rwanda, ordinary men. Some of you may not know what is driving you. I am telling you now, there is zeal without knowledge, but there is prophecy seeking fulfillment. When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, the four lepers were not there to hear it. One morning, they just could not sit down again. They said, why sit we here? The same way you got up and said, why am I prayerless? You do not know that it's a prophecy, that a prophet will rise from the east, a prophet will rise from the west, a prophet will rise from the north. It is that prophetic word that has now created a dissatisfaction within your spirit. I am sure that when the prophet spoke in the loins of time, and prophecy will come to land upon a minister do sin and raise him up and give him songs rest upon a nathaniel bassi and you see you just when you look at men you just think these people are uniquely distinct by an election of grace yes but let me tell you the truth when you align with prophecy you will find yourself looking like someone in scripture they have taught you you have to see a parallel of your life in future in the scripture there are men and women who you will look at your life and see that this is Esther forming. This is Elijah forming. This is John forming. This is Peter forming. Because mantles never leave the earth. No, it is only human bodies that live. So there are many mantles. No mantle in scripture today is in heaven. No, when mantles come, they do not go back again. Mantles maintain the continuity of God's program. Ah, only God knows who T.L. Osborne's mantle is still looking for. Only God knows who Ket Catherine Kuhlman's mantle is still looking for. It, no, it doesn't. Listen, listen, listen. Just because the mantle fell on a white man or a white woman, no, it does not mean it must. No, God does not work like that. Charles and Francis Hunter, they have gone to be with the Lord, but only God knows who will carry their mantles. You see, the truth is that you cannot confuse mantles. You can know that this is a... They, they looked at Elisha and they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And the mantles are many, oh, don't think there are just a few people. No. There are many, many, many mantles. The mantles that were upon Solomon that granted them access to wealth and riches. I know that one of these days, that mantle will find somebody. I'm telling you, this is not just the issue of financial prosperity. This is commanding dominion over resources for nations. But you see, you have one assignment to prepare yourself like Mary. To say be it unto me according to your word be it unto my destiny according to your word let's finish up so that we can pray my goodness i'm seeing a boiling pot just a pot boiling with water this is what i'm seeing Harato number three a season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies let me give you the last two five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ. Number one, I said, the season of the harvest. Number two, the season of abundance of grace. Number three, the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. And some of these prophecies are very ancient. Number four, are you ready? The fourth season that is being opened to the body of Christ now is a season of intense spiritual warfare intense spiritual warfare and you take my word for it intense spiritual warfare this is a call for a higher level of spiritual intelligence this is a call for a higher level of the grace for prayer intense spiritual warfare because every time a prophetic vista is open go and read your bible satan is also interested whether it is jesus he will kill children for his sake whether it is moses he will kill other children for his sake satan is always interested in the attention of god where is god looking at if god is looking at the north satan is interested in the north 
if God is looking at Nigeria, Satan is interested in Nigeria. One of the ways you know where the attention of God is, is the area of interest as far as Satan's attack is concerned. So don't ask why he seems to be zooming his attention on your family. He knows that the eyes of Jehovah has looked upon your family. But it demands intense spiritual warfare. You are a man of God here. The days of folding your arms to believe it to be ministry as usual is over. You must learn how to master the dynamics of the altar. How to command power with God and with men. Otherwise you will not survive the days that are coming. Hallelujah. Spiritual warfare. Darkness looms across the horizon. Hallelujah. Satan is releasing every arsenal, not to glorify him, but the truth is the truth. Releasing every arsenal in whatever fashion. But the Bible says now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. But we must be people of spiritual intelligence. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The intensity of the warfare in the days of Paul, it was so serious that as prayerful as Paul was, he said, brethren, pray for us. Brethren, not just give to us, pray for us. This is the reason why you see God steering prophetic intercessory ministries. Men and women who may never have the honor of standing on the pulpit to preach. But my goodness, these are people who they, God grants them grace to watch over his program across nations because of the depth of their grace to intercede. Not everybody will hold the mic and preach. Not everybody will go to the nations. The formation of the army, I have taught you, is a tripartite formation. Prophetic intercessors, those that are sent and those that provide supplies. This is the tripartite formation. Intense warfare. This is the time to pray for one another. This is a time to stand anybody you know and you love that God is using. Don't just clap for them. Pray for them. Are we together? Yes. Satan is selecting men in these days that represent nations to bring them down. Instead of fighting 20 million people, he will fight one person who controls the fate and the courage of those 20 million people. The Bible says strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. That means everybody you love, you owe it as a responsibility. Pray for every man of God, every psalmist, that God will keep them, that their quiver will be full of arrows. Intense warfare. I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hindered us. And Satan will use anything. This is a prophetic message. Anything. You know that God is raising you to be a sign and a wonder in business. Begin to pray. Don't make the mistake of the rich fool. And say, I have abundance. My soul find rest. It's only when you are alive that your money finds relevance. Make sure you are not careless. Spiritual intelligence. Some of you, this is the season where you surround your life with all kinds of prophetic seeds. This is where you engage with intelligence. The Bible says Job gave, offered sacrifices to garrison the lives of his children. It was only by the permission that was given to Satan. If not, Satan himself testified that he could not touch Job. There are, there are spiritual covenant dynamics that can close certain doors that only God can open. There are some of you, God is giving you intense instructions. For instance, he may say, sow a prophetic seed. You may not know why, but with it, you are using that seed to close a day of adversity that may want to be open. Intense spiritual warfare. The Bible says, speaking about the, the, the end times that God himself had to shorten those days so that the elect themselves. Do you know what that means? 
that God has to shorten the days of persecution and all of that so that the elect themselves will not be victims. That is a call for prayer. Jesus said, watch and pray. That means your defense and your being sustained in the days of adversity will demand intelligence. Watch means use your eyes, use your mind, be as wise as serpents, gentle as dove. Don't just pray. He said, watch and pray. Africa prays, but we don't watch. Watch and pray. Intelligence will be needed in your survival. There were times where Paul wanted to enter a city and he was afraid. And God said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. That means influence is a weapon of defense even in this end time watch and pray understand all the spiritual arsenals and as God empowers us to dish you those arsenals don't reject any weapon it will be needed for your survival when the weapon of prosperity comes receive it and add it to your quiver prayer receive it the word the prophetic there are times that when you stand in the battleground the Lord will say bring out your arsenal of prosperity and that's what will open a door for you there are times he will say bring out your arsenal of worship and you'll bring it out don't just choose one weapon and make the mistake of Samson and say no my hair cannot be cut be full of them happy is a man whose quiver is full of them even though he's speaking about children but when your quiver is full it grants you grace and stability you have a variety of spiritual weapons to use hallelujah yes Jesus had men he had the Holy Ghost he had resources he had power he had influence the only reason why he died was because he gave himself please hear me Africa believers do not reject any spiritual arsenal that God is bringing for you now there are people who will survive literally on the wings of prosperity there are people who will survive on the wings of relationships there are people who will survive on the wings of all kinds of things yes there are times where it is somebody holding your hand who will keep you alive in the storms there are times when it is your intellectual prowess that will keep you. Paul was bound one time and he saw the Sadducees and Pharisees. He knew that these people would destroy him. He intelligently now brought the issue of resurrection from the dead. And there was confusion between two of them because they do not agree on that. And that suspended his judgment. It gave him an edge until he was free. You will, the end times will need the deploying of every spiritual arsenal. Your brain will work, the mantle will work, the angelic will work, the name of Jesus will work, relationships will work, your gift will work. Are we together now? Do not reject any spiritual arsenal. Warfare demands that you bring out your best. You see nations fighting wars and when the wars get intense they bring out certain fighter jets certain armory that sometimes have been kept and only tested for decades they bring it out to show the intensity of the warfare the seasons that befall us are the seasons that would demand bringing our best spiritual arsenal to the point that God himself stands behind us like a mighty terrible one Number five, the fifth prophetic season that is before the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this day and in this season is a season of rewards. This is what God told me, a season of rewards. Let me tell you sincerely, there will be mighty visitations upon people, upon families, upon regions, and God is going to be coming to them to reward them for their contributions towards his program so far. This is what the Lord told me. A season of reward is coming. There are families that generationally participated in kingdom come across many, many, many dimensions. Some of the people to be rewarded have long gone. God will still look for their children and their children's children and reward them. If he visits iniquity to the third and fourth generation, the Old Testament tells us, then he can reward even greater than that. So there are many of you who are going to step into prepared blessings. Blessings you know you do not have a direct hand in, but it was the sacrifice your, when the missionaries came to your village. It was in your great-grandfather's house. He kept them. And before they died, some of them were persecuted, but they left a blessing. They said, you have done this to me. May others do it to your children. All of them died without receiving the promise, but God is not a man that he should lie. That word must still come to pass. 
Do you believe what I'm telling you? This is a season of rewards. There are many of you who are at the gates like Mordecai. You saved the life of Ahasuerus, but they, it was only written, but nobody rewarded you. My Bible says that night could not the king sleep. And the king, Ahasuerus, he called. He said, who is in the chamber? Bring me the chronicles. And when they opened it, they found where Mordecai saved his life, but he was not rewarded. And it was Haman that was used to design the reward of Mordecai. Sometimes the blessing you think will come from one believer uncle may not come from a believer uncle. It may be a non-believer that God will put pressure upon him and say you are an Egyptian but it's time to transfer something. You see, you have heard prophecies about wealth transfer. You've heard prophecies about so many things. Let me tell you those prophecies are not a lie. They are not a license for irresponsibility. You see, many believers have folded their arms and not, they are not diligent and productive and they just leave it all up to God. But do not make a mistake of laughing at or downplaying that prophecy because it is true that there is such a massive manifestation of that transfer, especially for kingdom programs. There are families that God is going to bless them with divine health that they cannot explain. This is a reward. God does not just give things. I have taught you that there are three levels of authority in the kingdom as far as rewarding men. Are concerned the least and the third level of reward is reward and dominion over things remember my teaching that when God rewards men he gives you things that is the least level of authority and reward the second level is reward as authority over nations systems and structures the highest level of reward God can give a man on earth today is to steward his program God can make you captain, not just over his inheritance, but over his program. So God can say the next move of the spirit for 10 years, this is the person I am putting to spearhead that move. Is the highest honor God can ever give any man, aside from salvation. And there are men who are going to be rewarded. You will see that God is going to increase the bishopric of many men. He is going to be collecting the one talent from unfaithful people and adding it to those who have turned five to ten. You will see multiplication of graces upon people. Capacity. When God increases a man, there are three things that happen to that man. Number one is a multiplication of grace and unction. Number two is an enlargement of your spiritual influence. Number three is a committal giving you greater spiritual responsibilities. Hallelujah. So you will see men that started as evangelists. But you will see other dimensions in them because certain bishoprics have been collected from careless people and added to faithful people. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that the bishopric of a man can be taken and that one talent carelessly used can be added to the one who brought ten. Hallelujah. So do not marvel when you see men stepping into accelerated levels of spiritual influence, of power, of grace, of access. This is one of the seasons that is upon us. Hallelujah. They looked at the disciples. They had faithfully followed Jesus. And something came upon them. The Bible says these are they that turn the world upside down. And what I'm telling you is not just happening in Nigeria and Africa alone. This is a global move of the spirit. But we are so privileged as a continent and as a nation for some reason. I think it's just the act of God's grace that the prophetic light for the nation has zoomed upon our nation and upon our continent. And so we are going to experience, it's already happening. Do not miss next week. I will be sharing with you other prophetic instructions. Don't forget our series, Navigating Prophetic Seasons. We looked at, behold, I do a new thing tonight. Helping us understand God's program. Let me do a one minute recap and then we'll find somewhere to begin to pray. That when God wants to begin to introduce a man into prophetic seasons, among the many things that he does is to take you away from over depending and and to take your mind away from your past good past 
bad past, remember ye not the former things. The moment they are former things, they have, they sustain the ability to distract you by bringing fear and complacency or pride and indiscipline. Either ways, we are mandated to forget about them. And then it says, behold, focus, position your spirit, be prepared. It says, I do a new thing. A new thing demanding discernment and flexibility. A new thing demanding strength and courage. A new thing demanding obedience. And I've shared with you now that there are five prophetic seasons. It's like a veil that is being opened over the body of Christ. Number one is the season of the harvest. Number two, the season of abundance of grace. Number three, the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies, both scriptural and prophecies as by patriarchs that have now joined the cloud of witnesses. Number four, the season of intense spiritual warfare, a call for higher levels of spiritual intelligence, a call for greater dedication in the place of prayer and spiritual warfare. And number five, is the season of rewards where God is bringing consolation to people we do not love the Lord and we do not serve him listen just because of things I have taught you however in the economy of God he will never allow people to serve him indefinitely without being rewarded Hebrews 11 and verse 6 the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists he is and that he is a rewarder a rewarder it is a name that he is called God rewards men so sooner or later some of you will receive a knock on your spiritual door like a parcel from DHL. You know how they come to you and they knock your door and say, are you so, 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 and so, is this your address? Someone's address, there is a parcel coming from heaven and with it is written the name of your children, your children's children. And for you, some of those rewards are so powerful, they will grant you rest roundabout. That is why we took out time to pray that God is visiting men. I hope you believe this. When the Lord turned again the cup, Activity of Zion it says we were like them that dream there are people who lament and say we see not our signs God you gave us a sign that when we see we should rejoice that victory is here we are tired of waiting and we've not seen the sign let me encourage someone hold on you are almost there one day to your miracle don't let the devil cheat you you have stood for this long stand until the end are we together now yes haven't done all to stand stand in prayer stand in diligence stand as you are serving the lord for some of you you have felt so embarrassed serving the lord they've called you all kinds of names church this mother mary don't worry the rewarder is coming when he comes he does not reward you in secret go and read your bible the bible says god who sees you in secret will reward you openly openly that someone will lose sleep and God will tell him for this my son give him a car give him a house and a million dollars in his account it does not make sense but it does not matter that is God for you God is beyond the realm of sense he's able to bless people the rewarder I have experienced these kinds of seasons in many levels in my own life to be very honest with you there are seasons where God decides to tell you my son my daughter Thank you for your faithfulness, serving my purposes. I am coming to you as a rewarder. It is a pleasant thing to see the rewarder in action. He can wipe your tears of many years in one day. Do you know, I'm wrapping up, there are many people today who you cannot quantify the sacrifice of their service unto God, their time, their resources, there are times I'm traveling and I just rest my head in the aircraft and I'm saying, my God, if not for the love of God, who is going to do this? Stretch from pillar to post. Can I tell you, maybe there's some preacher following and you are saying, Apostle, I am tired. I've been asking the Lord to bring me a consolation. I give you good news tonight in this series that the God of heaven is also a rewarder and that there is a spiritual parcel right from the throne of his majesty that is coming to you and it will be written with your name unmistakable it will be clear that God has come to visit you and for you 
Genesis 21 and verse 1 where we started off will be your testimony and the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he had said and the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he has spoken visitation and the doings of God it is your inheritance in Christ your own is a call to be faithful as we explore these seasons my assignment is to guide you but your assignment is to discern and to know what to do after the order of the sons of Issachar. To those who are faithful, remain faithful. To those who are unwavering, it's time to stand your ground because the urgency of the matter, the urgency of prophecy in this season will not demand vacillations and carelessness. To the preacher who is discouraged, stand. To the businessman who is about giving up, stand. To the family person who is thinking is God faithful, stand. Even to the one who has cried many tears in the secret and in the open, stand. The rewarder is coming. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Four years before the manifestation of Jesus, I'm sure Anna the prophetess would have been tired of praying. Till now he's not come. And I can imagine the spirit telling her continue. Imagine the joy on her face the day they brought a baby. She said, finally, I've seen the consolation. 64 years of prayer nonstop. How about the man, 38 years? Only God knows how many prophets may have come around him to say, don't worry. One day you are going to meet a Messiah and you'll be healed. He would have thought it was a lie. But finally, Jesus came. We're going to rise up and pray. Please, everybody stand and let's pray for a minute or two. There are three prayer points I'm going to give you and I want you to pray it from the depth of your heart. This is a very prophetic season and I do not want you to be careless. Prayer point number one, you are going to cry for the seeing eye, the hearing ear, capacity to discern what God is doing in your life in this season. Please open your mouth and pray in one minute. Grace, grace, capacity to discern. Someone is praying. Shabalika parakatoska frede beleketosh. Capacity to discern what you are doing. Capacity to interpret the writings on the wall. For koinonia, for my life, pray for yourself. Lord, what are you saying? What is the blueprint of your doings for the nation in this season? Reveal to me what is the strategy for victory. In the days that are ahead, call on me and I will answer, he says. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Someone is investing a minute to your destiny. You are praying from the depth of your heart. Zaria, pray. Koinonia Global, pray. Following online, pray. Lord, grant me capacity to discern the things that you are saying. To discern the move of the spirit the wind blow it where it listed you cannot tell when it's coming or where it is going so is one who is led of the spirit discernment 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 give me the eyes to see who are the men you are bringing into my life in this season? Give me the grace to discern so I do not throw away Jesus out of the boat. You may throw away Jonah, but don't make a mistake to throw away Jesus. Thinking Jesus is Jonah. Both of them slept. Jesus was sleeping. Jonah was sleeping. You may throw away Jonah, but wake Jesus. Don't throw him out of your boat. Pray for discernment. Lord, how should I do ministry in this season? How should I run my family in this season? Give me the prophetic blueprint for excellence, for dominion. No assumptions. What are you saying in this season? Lead me to the scripture that becomes a compass for me. And the flexibility 
to follow virgin dimensions in the spirit trusting that they will bring me to my place of destiny in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the second prayer you are going to pray for grace for obedience of number one obedience to scriptures and obedience to what compliant prophetic instructions please lift your voice and pray obedience having the readiness to judge every disobedience the bible declares if and when your obedience is complete someone is praying in one minute someone is praying grace for obedience let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus that even though he was God, he considered it not robbery, but he humbled himself to die, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I like you to pray. Grace to be obedient. Grace to be obedient. Whatsoever he says to do, do. Whatsoever he says to say, say whatsoever he says to give give wherever he says to go go hallelujah hallelujah the final prayer for tonight you are going to pray for yourself and all who are connected to you you are going to declare the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous either through the ministry of men or through demonic manipulations create a spiritual garrison around your life your ministry oh it will not be lost my bishopric will not be taken someone pray in the name of jesus the lamb stand that god has lit with his fire it will remain burning to shine the light to everybody go ahead and pray rebuke the spirit of fear Rebuke the spirit of pride. Rebuke the spirit of complacency. In the name of Jesus, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I take away distractions. Someone is praying. In your prayer is the restoration of your prayer life. In your prayer is the restoration of your word study life. In your prayer is the restoration of your passion for the house of God the disciplines that bring and sustain graces pray satan the lord rebuke you the spirits of witchcraft ancestry manipulators that destroy the longevity of impact i come against you in the name of jesus one minute pray with fire pray with passion from within your spirit cover your children cover your family satan you will not take the life of any of my people satan you will not destroy the relevance of every anybody around me decree it and declare soundness of health increase in wisdom longevity of impact Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me borrow one minute from you and add a prayer point for you. One prayer, I shall not die. Pray it violently for yourself and for your children. Lift your voice and pray. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Decree and declare. No, I shall not die. In the name of Jesus. Declare that your ministry will not die. Declare that your business will not die. It's not only humans that die. 
what God has given you can be destroyed by Satan. I shall not die. Pray. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord in this prophetic season. No enchantment, no divination, no weapon, no demonic arrow will find expression in my life. I stand immune, fortified by the blood of the Lamb. Please invest one minute and pray. Just obey prophetic instructions in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover your parents, cover your siblings, cover your business people. Cover the people in your ministry in the name of Jesus. Protected by God, preserved by God. Let the mark of the blood be upon you. Dreams about death, dreams of seeing dead people. Rebuke those dreams right now in the name of Jesus. Halike Parakatos life 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 even forevermore life vitality health in the name of jesus life i cause the spirit of death pray i cause the spirit of death not by accident not by plane crash not by the activity of wicked men you are immune the eyes of evil will not see you it will not see your children. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed no eye has seen say no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be born one more time no I has no fear no has what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work be formed in me till your power rests on me your glory revealed through me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me this is a moon this is a moon This is the moon. This is the moon. Let me give you an assignment. As you go home, please use this week to listen to this message again. Don't assume that just because you were here, you heard it. If you are a man of God, listen again. There is the hearing that brings awareness, but there is the hearing that brings understanding. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing there is the hearing many of us we have heard the hearing of awareness but there is hearing unto understanding and it says the he that fell upon good ground is he that heard and understood not just he who was aware hallelujah praise the name of the Lord let me make an altar call right now and then I just speak over our lives I want to plead with us that every time we're making a call. I know that there's a crowd of people. Let's minimize unnecessarily, except if you have to. 
a minute or two spared for the altar call does not stop us from going wherever let's as much as possible except if we have to it's important to practice that discipline let's not get too used to ignoring and shrugging of the altar call there's someone here you heard me speak and for you the first instruction in this season is to make it right with Jesus you came to church from the prayer to the worship the testimonies and all that has happened in this service has been prepared by the Spirit himself ultimately to lead you to a point where you see the need for Jesus it matters that you make Jesus Lord of your life is beyond being a Christian so I'm making a call right now for someone who came to church in this auditorium all the overflows outside Zaria and our global family who is saying apostle I need to make it right with Jesus or perhaps you are saying I want to rededicate my life to Jesus I cannot say for sure that I'm walking in the things of God the times that we live in demand certainty and seriousness I want to count one to five very quickly for sake of time and I beseech you to leave your seat and to quickly run and come and stand in front of me you do same in all the viewing centers overflows and all our expressions wherever you are as I count one to five don't wait for someone to be the first to come run and come and stand before Jesus one Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do. Please come, run to Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set up. This is the moment we need more. This is the moment. Thank you very much for your courage. Jesus said, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Azaria family and all who are making this decision, as I lead these precious ones in prayer, please do join them, mean it from the depth of your heart. Let me request all of you who are in front, please lift your right hand if you can, high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this convincingly, let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, one more time, say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen Father, thank you for these precious people. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And based on the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven in the name of Jesus. The power to live a victorious Christian life, I release upon you right now. And I declare in Jesus' name that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Now the counselors are waving the placard at you. Please do well to just move to my right, which is your left. They'll have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them. Koinonia, give them a big God bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, 
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching